we spent a lot of time programming our app and for the result that we get out of this class it's a uh, it's an academic app um, it's not the most amazing app there's still more that we can do with it but if we look back at where we started at and where we ended we've we've learned a lot hopefully to make our app from beginning to end and uh, if it were an app that were more designed for like your company or some other sort of project we would want to then promote it we would want people to know that the app exists um, so they can download it give you reviews and if you're selling the app 99 cents 2.99 whatever you definitely want people to know about your app so they can download it I'm gonna then cover some aspects of marketing this is going to be our one-day crash course on marketing because not only do I teach this three-month sequence of programming an Android app I teach a variety of classes on web marketing I teach a variety of classes on social media just actually earlier today at five o'clock uh, I had the uh, online orientation class in this room uh, for an online social media class if you're interested I can give people that access code, but basically it's going to be a three-week course where we cover uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as marketing tools. So I have these two sides of the same coin that I teach for this campus. Uh, in those other classes, people have a website that they want to promote or a business or something, and so I, I teach classes on social media, how to build a website, uh, blogging, and all of that. And the other side of the coin is I t focus on this uh, app class. So today we're going to do a one-day crash course into a social network um, because social networks nowadays are the are the, um, the the new media form of marketing. In the old days, marketing would be a billboard on the road, uh, an ad on the radio, an ad on TV, um, flyers put on a car. Or the guy twirling the sign on the corner pointing to your business those were marketing ways of marketing marketing 1.0 marketing 2.0 is Twitter Instagram snapchat YouTube all of these social networks where people spend a lot of time um, by the latest stats Facebook for example has about 1.8 billion users worldwide the population of the world is like 7 billion so almost two in seven people of the world are on Facebook. Now personally, full disclosure, I don't like Facebook very much. Um, I hardly log on to it. My friends and family say, well, why didn't you like my photo? I didn't even see it. I hardly log on. There's many other social networks that I like better than Facebook. But um, I'm part of a company, in addition to teaching, where we do social media management for businesses. We get hired by a, a client. And we're going to do Twitter, we're going to run Facebook, we're going to do their YouTube, we're going to run their social media. So we'll be covering two social, one and a half social networks today. Um, if you have this one to work with, then we can most uh, focus on it. If you don't, um, again, for personal purposes, I don't like Facebook that much. I, um, but for business purposes, I do. It's a way to reach an audience. The network, however, that we will be covering today, I think lends itself more to a techie audience, and I think it's a little bit easier to use and still find an audience. Uh, I'm going to be covering Google+. Plus. So if you want to do this like me, you can open your web browser and go to plus.google.com all the social networks have various concepts that overlap I'm gonna cover Google Plus it doesn't have the the same number of users as Facebook and perhaps not the same fame but I have seen person personally and professionally the people you, that use Google Plus are passionate are a good audience a good people to reach out to because every social network sort of has their style and their niche um, their demographics and the Google Plus demographic seems to focus on tech savvy people people interested in Android 
operating system, you will be able to find all kinds of people that are on Google+, Plus, just like you find a lot of all kinds of people on Facebook or Twitter, uh, Instagram, but perhaps, you know, if I'm on Pinterest, oftentimes Pinterest is a great network to find a female audience. If my product is female-focused, Pinterest is often a good network to get onto to find that audience. Google Plus is often a good network to get onto if you want to find a tech-savvy audience. You'll obviously still find the female demographic on Google+, and obviously you still will find the other one. Oh, you're here for the class then, and then this is another class. The only thing that I can tell you at the moment, um, the orientation was from 5 to 6. Right. Um, and If you could print your name on that and uh, print your name on that, and then um, you can contact me and get you into the class. It's, it's the yes, it's the it's just one paper. It's so. The uh, target audience of these different networks, they do vary, but you can often find the audience you're looking for, depending on the network. Because we've built an app, an Android app, I think the best network to target would be Google+. Plus. Um, Google+, Plus obviously, comes from the Google company, and so does Android. Android comes from Google, and so does Gmail, and all of these entities. Google has a very big reach, and they've got their own social network. There was, before Google+, Plus, there was Twitter, before that there was Facebook, before that there was MySpace, remember MySpace? And so um, there's been these evolutions of social networks, and Google, they felt, a lot of people are spending a lot of time on these social networks. Let's build our own social network to reach an audience. And truth be told, Google Plus has not reached the same plateau as Facebook. Nothing has reached the same plateau as Facebook, perhaps only YouTube. You might not think about it as such, but YouTube is a um, social network because you can do many of the actions on YouTube that you do on Facebook, that you do on Google Plus, etc. So nothing's reached the plateau of Facebook, but we're going to use it as the final piece of the puzzle for our Android class because we'll be able to reach this audience. You're welcome. So what you want to do here, plus.google.com, if you've already got a Gmail account, we can use it. If you don't, uh, we can uh, create an account here. But Google Plus will have a way to reach an audience that cares about a topic. Here it's showing me collections these are topics. Wildlife photography, uh, monochrome photos, Venezuela, the NBA, etc. People are sharing content on a topic, and therefore the audience that would care about that topic could find, could find um, what they're looking for. Uh, taking one step ahead, for us, we're going to use Google Plus or any social network to reach an audience that's interested in Android apps. Or let's say later on after this class I decide to build an app that does something else. Let's say, you know, some kind of photography app. So I can create content on the social network there to reach that audience. All for free. Completely for free because as opposed to the classic form of marketing where it's not free, where I have to um, Oh, actually, be careful about that. That was the other. She said, she signed the wrong one. Okay, oh, never mind. <laughs> Go ahead and sign. This is mine. Um, what's this one? Anyway, um, the, um, the app that you might create now or later can be targeted to 
people that would care about the app. I build that photography app. Maybe I build uh, previous semesters. I remember a student was building a um, a health app uh, to track health statistics. With PouchDB, obviously, we can store a lot of types of data. Um, so her app was going to store, you know, a person's workout routine, the, the length of time, or how many reps of sit-ups or whatever. So she had a fitness app, and on Google Plus or any social network, we can find that audience that would care about our app. That's the big idea here. Using a social network, we're going to find people that would care about our app. And personally, I can tell you, personally and professionally, this, this works. Um, I'm part of a company that we, we make apps for clients, we run social media for clients, we do websites for clients. And we find a lot of success for clients uh, when we target these networks, and I often see that if I run the same piece of content on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, oftentimes the Google Plus audience is, is more in tune or is better than the other audiences in that they pay attention more rather than the Facebook audience and such. So we're going to see about creating the net creating the account, looking at collections, and another aspect, communities, to find the audience that would care about your app. So if you want to go over to plus.google.com, and at the top right I'll click sign in. If you don't have a Google Plus, you'll easily be able to create one with a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you can easily go through the create account process. I'm going to sign in one of my Gmail accounts. Google Plus has been around, I think, either since 2011 or, or 2012 or so. And it's, um, it, as I said, it, it's never reached the fame of, of Facebook, but that's okay. There's still hundreds of millions of users. One conservative estimate is that there's about 150 or 120 million users on Google+. Uh, another estimate is it's, it's up to like 300 million or even more. So there's hundreds of millions of people that are using Google+. There's hundreds of millions of people using Twitter, hundreds of millions on Instagram, and so forth, and about 1.8 billion on Facebook. So there's people out on these networks for you to reach. Um, I logged in, and to me it's telling me, you know, welcome to the new Google+, follow amazing things made by passionate people. For example, in my case, it's showing me Jason Mays is sharing content about programming. Um, Viola Starby over here is sharing about UX, about user experience. Danny Van Der Merle is sharing about open source software. So again, a much more tech-savvy audience, I feel, is what you can find easier on Google+. So here, Google+, Plus is giving all of these people free advertising. They didn't pay for this. They're not famous people except, you know, internet fame, whatever that's worth. And they're getting here promoted right at the home page, the login screen of Google+. So if I wanted, if I cared about programming, I could follow this collection. And Google+, Plus, like every network, has the, the action of sharing. I'm going to share on Twitter. I'm going to share on Google+. Plus. I'm going to share on Facebook. Jason is sharing stuff about programming, either stuff of his own or other stuff that he's found. So think about myself, we will see that we could create a uh, collection and have our own content there as well. The other class that I teach on social media, the one of uh, the one that's running, it just started today, social media for your business. You're welcome to enroll in that also if you want the ad code. But that one we focus on these various concepts of you've got a business, you've got a brand or product, 
we want it to get found, so we engage in social media. We fit on that boat. We've got an app, and if this was an app that we created that was quote-unquote for real, I would want people to know about it and download it. So I've logged into Google+. Plus. On the left side, we've got various screens. Home screen, collections, communities, profile, people, notifications. Under collections, Google Plus shows me featured collections. Um, collections where I'm following an account. That's what happens when I have to juggle more than one class on one day. So, uh, collections here, what I would do is um, I've got a screen for yours. I can create collections here because I've got something I want to share to the world, to the users of Google+. So let's say, taking the example of that student that she had this fitness app, um, she could go over to the create a collection and create a collection such as fitness apps tagline, the best apps to keep you fit. So taking a step back, what I'm doing here is something that I would do on every network. They all have commonalities. I'm trying to get people to find me. There's an aspect of SEO in this, um, search engine optimization. SEO, in a nutshell, is that I've got a website, I want people to find it. They're going to use a search engine. So I have to optimize my website for the search engines. One of the many techniques of SEO is to put keywords of what people might search for. People spend all day doing a Google search, or they're on Yahoo search, or Bing search, whatever. They search the internet. And so if I craft my keywords, people might find me. Google Plus has a search just like Facebook has a search, just like Twitter has a search. Those search, those searches only search inside of the network. A Google Plus search will only return content in Google Plus. A Facebook search will only return content in Facebook. A plain old Google.com search or Bing.com or Yahoo.com searches all over the web. So here, the people that are on Google+, Plus, they may be interested here. They search. I want to find fitness apps, or I want to find how to get fit, or I want to find health tips. So I have to think about what are search terms that people could use, because I've got an app that people could find. Let's say I've got that fitness app. I don't have the space to write a whole paragraph of possibilities of search that's built in because Google Plus and other networks don't want you to abuse the network. They don't want you, they don't want for you to have a thousand characters there for you to write a bunch of keywords and even keywords that don't make sense, that don't apply. So from this particular screen of creating the collection, I have a little bit of space, but I want to just say fitness app, the best app to keep you fit. Create. You can further customize it here, pictures and such. I've got my own picture, I can upload it. Uh, none of these are quite fitness-like, but it's good enough. Customize colors, save. Your collection is now visible, tap to share your first post. So these are like folders to organize content. If I was a web de if I was an app design studio and I'm publishing a variety of kinds of apps, I can make collections for those different apps based on their topic. And when people search up here fitness 
you could get possible collections, communities, people, and posts. Um, as I create this content on Google+, Plus or on Twitter, or on Facebook, my content would show up when people search. If you take the more in-depth social media class, we go into detail with a lot about this. Um, how to create content, what are ideas, how to get found, uh, because nowadays this is the new marketing. That billboard on the, on, the, on the highway might not work, the ad in the newspaper, on TV, those might not work, so it's about social media. So I have this collection, and I can create as many collections as I want. Um, let's see, educational apps. I could say here, college level apps about education. These could be keywords that people are searching for. And I've got a collection that people could find. So I can create a variety of collections, and the point of them is that I would have content in these. These are like folders for organization. In the educational apps collection, I can write or I can post to that collection, where I have a spot here where I can write some text. I can add some links. I can attach pictures. And links. I can add polls. So asking questions and a location. So I have these different kinds of things that I can share. All the networks have this. You share on Twitter a picture or a link or text. We have Facebook, you can share a picture links and other content. Google Plus, you also have, for example, Pinterest and other things. So all of these networks have a way for you to share content. Our purpose here is, I'm going to say something like, under the educational app, our newest app was just released, my SDCE. Keep up to date with classes at San Diego Continuing Education. Download now for Android. So I don't I don't have a, a limit to how much I can write here. Twitter is limited to 140 characters. Facebook has no limit. Google Plus has no limit. But I wouldn't quite write a whole paragraph here. Social media is very short attention span, very transitory. People see something that they like, then they move on. What's next? What more can I consume? So I'm starting to advertise my particular app right here. To make it complete, I would add the link of the, of the app at the App Store. few more public published apps. Cool. So let's say on my app, remember I've got the share link. I can attach the, the link here. What it'll do is create a preview. So I'm about to share a little text. The link is embedded. That'll be directly to the App Store. I 
post that. I've got something in a collection now. So Google Plus over at plus.google.com gives me this free marketing tool. Maybe you've heard of Google Ads. Google has this whole system where people can pay to get their content visible on um, on a Google search. Well, they've got this whole free, they've got this whole other aspect which is free, Google Plus. It's a way for me to reach an audience without having to pay for it. Google Ads work very well, however, because you can target who will see your ads. If you often visit tech websites and then you browse around the web, you will often see ads about tech. Most likely you're seeing Google Ads about technology because someone created the ad and targeted it to your um, interests. Technology. That's the whole empire that Google has. Google Ads. They make lots of money out of that. Billions of dollars. People want to reach an audience. You know, mom and pop shop on the corner wants to reach an audience. They buy Google Ads. Then their business is promoted to people that would care about their company. Well, for free, we have Google Plus. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. The problem here is that using collections relies on two things. Either that a person searches some of those keywords that I wrote there, or that they follow me. You can get followers on Google+, followers on Twitter, followers on Instagram, followers on Facebook. That's people that are paying attention to you on the social network. They've chosen to keep up to date with you, to follow you, to see your content. As I said earlier, that's marketing 2.0. Marketing 1.0 is the billboard on the 5, is the flyer on the car. Um, the problem with that is that when you get to your car and you've got a flyer, 99% of the time people don't like that. They're getting an ad for something they don't care about on their car. Hopefully then they dispose of that flyer properly, not just crumple it up and throw it on the floor. But you got targeted. You got, you, that is, you got marketed without targeting. You need carpet cleaning? No, I don't. I have hardwood floors. So that ad completely was irrelevant to me. But if that carpet cleaner was able to know these are 20 people that need carpet cleaning, let me tell them that I exist. Well, that's social media. Social media is the way for me to target the people that would care most about my content. And my content in this case is apps. But I have no followers. So right now, the only people, the only way someone would find my post about my app is by doing a search. No one knows I exist, so no one's paying attention to me. And if they searched, they might find that that app of mine. So that's a problem. I have to I have to build followers. All the social networks have that have that crux, that important aspect in that I have to build that audience. Most small uh, companies or organizations, they start off with zero followers on these networks and they need to build followers. One of the reasons I really like Google Plus is it's one of it's got sort of like a, a way to, to make an end run around that problem. I can easily start to build an audience in the way that I'm about to show because with all other networks you kinda have to invest a lot of time and effort to build your followers. Google Plus I've seen is one of the most uh, effective ways to build an audience quickly and it's through using communities. If we click on communities whereas collections are like folders that I create of content that only I can add to. Communities are like the classic B2B 
BBSs or bulletin boards or news groups in that people are in are congregating on a topic and it's open for people to 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 join and contribute. So for example, I get these of skydiving, social media strategy, television, renewable energy, HDR photography, all the important stuff, like Steven Universe. So these are communities where people are congregating. 209,000 daredevils are in the skydiving community. Uh, 359,000 social media marketers are in this one. 403,000 are in television. If I just take a, for example, a, a look at skydiving, I can, without clicking join, I can click the, com the community to look inside of it. And so, you know, uh, Music Dog posted something, Halfon posted something, Air Brasilia Point posted latest entertainment. So different people are posting into this community of skydiving. And these people are all bound together on a certain topic. You're a little bit late, actually, for the social media class. This is another class. Yes. But Sorry. what I can give you is the information. If you can print your name on this, print your name legibly. So these people are all on this particular topic and it seems to be pretty popular because if I see below the post, this has got 505 plus one. So that's Google's version of a like. You have a like on Facebook or you have a like, the little heart on Twitter. Google Plus has um, plus one. You've got another icon, which is a share, which is that this content was spread to more people. Um, 247 likes, 126, etc. So this is active. This is, again, what I'm saying, that Google Plus is a great way to reach an audience that cares about your app. Um, you might say, okay, that's skydiving, but we built an app. Uh, is there like an app community? Yes, for example, up on search, I can search Android. And I'll get Android collections, but communities are much more valuable. If I vote, if I go to more, this will show me lots of communities related to Android. For example, Android development, three hundred and ten thousand members. Um, Android developer tools, one hundred and thirty. I have all of these different communities. All of these are places for me to reach an audience. I've got this app that we've built, and some of these communities are very large, like this one, one million. This one's even larger over here, two million. And on most of these, you're able to, to join as many of them as you want. So it behooves us to think about reaching as many people as possible. So. I've already joined that one. Uh, let me unjoin it just to show you what that's about. If I've got this app that I'm trying to, to market, no one knows I exist. One of the fastest ways to reach an audience then for my app is go to where the people are. And so I've got, if I've got this Android um, community, before joining, I can preview any of these communities and read what people are posting. So people are posting lots of things. This is lots of people, 310,000 people enrolled here.
even bigger one over here. Android has this Android community has two million members. This is the way to get around the problem of I have zero followers, no one's paying attention to me, no one knows my app exists. This is a way to get around that. Right away I can quickly reach, in theory, two million people that care about this topic. You don't have this really on Facebook, you don't have it on Twitter, you don't have it on Pinterest, you have it on Google+. And as I said before, well, Google Plus is the platform that is more tech-savvy. We've just built an app. We probably can reach this tech-savvy audience if we focus on Google Plus. So, for our purposes, we spent all of this time building this app, three months, and if it were an app that were for real, for real download, for real people, this is something that I would really want to engage in. This is something that I'd want to, uh, to do to reach the audience for people to download my app. I can't contribute to the community until I join a community, and you'll see that many of these simply say join. Some of them say ask to join see any here, but some of them say ask to join, and therefore someone has to sort of approve that you can come into the community. So once I join a community, I can then click in the community, and I have the ability to post to that community. Uh, I have to put my name here in the source, I already did it, and I got this number, right? And I'm using the same thing. And, and I'm not giving the class to you, or...? No, this is a different class. Ah, this is a different class? It's a different class. The other class here is on mine. So that's the thing you go to the to air to, to go into the class material. You need to post it, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, you need to go here to downstairs where It's very hard. They have people come in. They come. Have people come in person to get in one of my cards. Yeah. I told them to. Okay. So if I've joined this community now, I have the ability to post to the community. So great, I would click there and, and say, hey everyone, check out my app, it's amazing, here's the link, go ahead and download it. Well, not so fast. I have the ability to perhaps reach 310,000 people, but if you've used any uh, BBSs, bulletin board systems, news groups and such from back in the day, there's often moderators, people that are keeping the community on, on target keeping the community spam-free and such. So most of these communities oftentimes have a top post somewhere, like community guidelines. Ian Lake, a moderator of this community, says, Welcome to the official Android development community. This community is a place for all Android developers can help one another share resource sources, and make us all better developers. However, that means that this is not the appropriate place for certain posts. Spam. Soliciting, recruiting, promotional posts, ROM, theme, and icon pack development posts about new devices, system updates, reading posts without any text. Posts of this nature may be removed without warning or result in being banned from the community. And there's other communities that they're mentioning here. So I cannot simply dive into this community and say, hey everyone, download my app, because there are often moderators and rules. 
And the people that make these rules or moderators and such are not, are often not official Google employees, they're regular people. Um, you can create a community if you want. This community was already created before people have joined it, and the moderators like Ian are keeping it on topic. But Ian most likely has no affiliation with Google. It's just some person that either created the the um, community or was granted access. So I say that because every community is different. Everyone often has different rules and they're enforced in different ways. If I go look at another community, this one with a million members, if they're on topic, you will see the posts and you will see somewhere about rules. Let's see if I can find other rules. Important information, read before posting. So over here, Landry, the moderator here posted this. Community rules, no spam, etc. So the community itself polices itself. It doesn't rely on Google itself to set the rules and enforce them. To some degree, yes, there are the general Google Plus rules about software piracy and all of that, but inside of the community itself, the moderators are in charge. And I've seen this firsthand because, again, as I said, I am also part of a company that we, that we do social media for clients. And also, I personally, I like to use a lot of these social networks. Google Plus, personally, is one of my favorite networks. Um, Twitter, I also like that one. So I've used Google Plus early on since like it got out of beta. Uh, I, I've been using it, and I've been seeing it evolve, and I've been seeing the activity, and it's always been a fun, interesting place to, to, to be at, to use. But I've seen firsthand when there is like one moderator who's a tyrant, one moderator who we've stepped into their domain and they run it how they want. I was a member of one of these photography communities and I was sharing my photography there and I thought I was following the rules but I kept seeing that my photos kept being removed. So then eventually I got removed from the community where I thought I was following all of the rules but that particular moderator uh, only like certain kinds of themes in photography. Even though it wasn't in the official rules, mine kept getting removed. And then eventually he just removed me. So then I lost the access of reaching all those people. So I went off to one of these other communities. There, there, is a, there are a couple of official Google communities. I think one is Google Help. Most of them are made by regular people. But for example, this Google Help one, Google Plus Help, this is an official Google Plus community. I went to that community, I pleaded my case, and I said, hey, here are the rules of that community, here's what I've been posting, I had screenshots and such, and I got removed from that community, can you do something about it? And the moderators of this community said, sorry, as long as the community is not breaking the general rules of Google+, the moderator can run it however he or she wishes. So that particular moderator had this iron fist that um, my content ran afoul of. So there was no way for me to get back into that community that had hundreds of thousands of members. I had to go to another such community with less members. I tell you that because you have an app to promote, but you don't want to just you know, become a spammer. You don't want to go into Android Authority community and just start saying, download my app etc etc without reading the rules because sometimes the rules say only one person post per day um, do not promote your own projects well if there's that kind of rule in a community why would I join it I'm wasting my time I can't post my own self-promotion it's gonna get taken down so why waste my time at a community like this one uh, don't promote other communities so you can't come to this community and say, go check out the black and white photography community. It'll get removed. Best case scenario, if you break one of the community rules, 
is that your post is removed. Worst case scenario is that you're removed and then you lose that audience. And depending if there's one moderator or many, and depending on their various dispositions and other aspects, you may or may not be able to get back into a community. Uh, recently, I posted uh, something over to a community and it was removed. So I contacted the moderator and I said, why did this get removed? I thought I was within the rules. And they said, oh, sorry, that was a different moderator. They didn't check the full content of yours and it got removed. You can post it again. So I did and everything's fine. That seems like a lot of work, but again, I'm involved outside of class in the world of social media marketing. Uh, my company gets hired by clients, local clients, that they've got a restaurant to promote, they've got software to promote, they've got something to promote to reach an audience. And we then get hired to do social media on YouTube or Google Plus or Twitter or Facebook or all of these myriad networks, and it works. I can show the results from these clients where before we started a campaign on Twitter, they had X number of sales of something, and afterward they have more sales. Now obviously they hire us, and we're charging them and all of that, but for us on the last day of class, I want to touch on some of these aspects for free. I want to give you this free advice that these clients would be paying for to reach an audience for their product. So for you, thinking ahead after you've taken this class, and you wish to further work on apps, great, you made an amazing app, no one knows about it. All your work is for naught, perhaps. The way that you get people to know about your app is to promote it. That's why I'm hitting on Google Plus so much. Free promotion. Yes? Have you ever created a, a group or community about it? I have, and the pitfall of that, of creating your own community, is that now you also have to run it. You have to be a moderator. You have to keep out the spam and, uh, and the negative comments and all of that. And you have to promote it to get people to join it. So I don't recommend. It's easy to create your own community, and anyone in the world can join it. But I don't recommend to create one because of so much work that goes into it. So the, the, the communities that have the apps to join, if you create a community and you, do you know if, there's a, if you can make that one of the situations like people have to ask you to get into it? And then you can kind of show it yes, definitely. If you create your own community here, there will be an option in here to make it uh, private, which is ask to join. So then you can control it much more and you allow the people that are trying to join, you allow yes to you, no to you. You have to be a bouncer. And that's perfectly fine to do, but most of the time, you know, with our clients, we tell them, don't create your own community, because you're busy running your business and paying us to do your social media. Now you're going to need to pay us to be your bouncer for your, for your own community. Or you yourself do it, but you're busy running your business. So I would say stick with uh, communities that already exist because the groundwork has already been laid you don't have the full control of the community but you're a part of a community there's one all about you know, Chrome OS maybe 50,000 people there's 78,000 people learning Photoshop maybe I've got some Photoshop skills that I want to promote I go here I post my link about learning Photoshop and I get you know a thousand hits to my blog that I couldn't have gotten otherwise So, as I was searching here for Android, I see lots of Android communities. I would join all the ones that are appropriate, but then I have to make sure I read the community rules of each. I follow the rules. A lot of these also say no cross-posting, meaning if you posted something on one of these communities, don't post the same thing on another one. You might say, how do they know that? Well, if there's a moderator that cares enough about the community, they most likely care enough to, to check that stuff out, to see who posted this and did they also post it elsewhere. So, read the rules, follow the rules, contribute to communities that are relevant. We've built this app 
and we want to promote it, but maybe we also want to share the source code. You know, all the code that we wrote here, maybe you want to share it so uh, people can build their own version of the app or such. When you're thinking about joining a community, like I, like I said for the other example, there was a student that created a fitness app. If I search for fitness app, are there communities about fitness apps? There's Android apps, iPhone and iPad apps, general fitness. So there's communities on that topic of fitness. I'm free to join them all. This usually shows it to you in diminishing returns. Notice they often get smaller, um, less people. Sometimes you get communities with like a hundred members. I don't recommend joining communities with a very small group because then you have a very small gene pool. You have a few amount of people that you're going to be promoting that is marketing to. I often say don't join communities with less than a thousand people. That might not be enough people to sustain itself. People don't see a lot of content so they get bored and then they, they don't contribute. So I would, I would say at least a thousand members. On the opposite, you can join communities that are too big, and the problem there is that people are constantly posting stuff, so yours gets pushed down. Newer posts push down older posts. Something like the million member communities, those might be kind of big. Lots of content being shared there. But I have had success joining some of these million member communities and you get like a flash of activity and more stuff appears and then yours dies down. Then a week or so later I contribute again and I get on you know, the top again. But I'm not going to post the same thing over and over because I'm probably running afoul of one of the community rules. So again, there's a lot that we can um, that we can cover on this or, or any network. This would be better to learn on the other class that I teach that focuses on on social media, the one that's very popular that people come in an hour late for. Um, you can take that class and learn uh, much more social media. I'm going to touch on different aspects today on the last day of class of promotion. Uh, we're going to take a break in a moment and talk more about social media and marketing and such, but any, any questions so far on Google Plus or the general concept? Okay, uh, let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll, we'll look at another uh, promotion tool for our apps. It's 6.57. We'll be back at 7.07. .07.